morning everyone, welcome to another Default Route UK technical video, my name is Rich and today we're going to do a, an, un, uh, an unpracticed video on OSPF Virtual Link technology. So it's something I think most of us will be aware of, I'm sure you've seen it in, in some exams, certainly I have uh, in a few. And uh, I think that's the key to this really, Virtual Links, you know, you'll see them in, in exams but in a live environment very, very few and far between. I've never seen a productionized vir Virtual Link stay in for very long. So you'd use a Virtual Link maybe to get over a temporary problem where you've got discontiguous OSPF areas uh, because that's what they're used for. Um, let me let me cover that off a little bit. So in an OSPF network, you've got area, right? An area, t an area number. And if you've got more than one area, you you have to have one of those areas as area zero or the backbone area, binary zero, right? Number zero. So on our di on our diagram here, we've got area zero as the backbone area running on uh, these interfaces for R one and R two, and the loopback interfaces for R one and R two are all in area zero. That's our backbone area. And then hanging off the backbone area, we've got another area, area 1. And in area 1, we have the network interface here for R2, we've got one for R3, and the loopback interface for R3. They're all in area 1. And that's fine, and that will all work perfectly well. And then we've got area 2. Now, I've put area 2 behind area 1, and this is where it all starts to go wrong. OSPF areas have to touch the backbone area. Okay, um, You can't have discontiguous OSPF networks. So you, what I mean by that is you you can't have uh, an area not touching area zero. All right. So in our case here, what we'd really want to be doing is is having area two connected directly to area zero, and then that would be fine. So this is where the virtual link comes in, and um, it's just one of the ways you can connect these networks. You know, other than another way might be just a tunnel area zero so you create a GRE interface maybe on R2 and R3 connect area zero across the GRE tunnel and then hey presto area two and area zero are connected with area uh, through this GRE tunnel but today we're going to discuss uh, virtual links so there's a little bit of background there's the topology um, everything's configured bar for R4 uh, bar for R4 so R4's got, got nothing on it apart from a host name uh, I've not configured any of the IP addressing on here and uh, but everything else is done. So R1, R2, and R3 are all configured for OSPF. All the IP addressing is on there, and the loopback interfaces are in their respective areas as described here. Okay. Okay. So let's just get onto uh, onto R4 here, and um, let's have a look. Make sure there's, uh, there's nothing on there. Still show IP route. Yeah. So there's nothing on there. Show IP interface brief. Oops. Show IP interface brief. No IP addresses on there. Although. Uh, that interface is up, so that's that's a good start. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and configure the loopback interface. So loopback zero, give it an IP address 4.4.4.4. .4 that's what we want to do. We'll give it a 24-bit mask, uh, or a, <laughs> a few more bits in there than I need. Okay, so let's configure the fast Ethernet interface. 10.1.34.4 uh, again, 24-bit mask. That's already up, so I don't need to do a no show, but I'll do that just just to show you guys that that it is up. Um, now let's configure OSPF. All right, so OSPF. We'll give it a process ID of one, router ID of four to four to four to four. Uh, that's common practice to use the uh, uh, well, it, you know, it would default to using the highest uh, IP address of the loopback of any loopback connected on the box, but we're gonna we're gonna manually code that in to use a uh, loopback interface zero's IP address. So router ID four to four to four to four. We're going to put um, that interface into area 2, did I say? Yeah, I did. But let me just put the 32 ones in there. So it's a uh, wildcard master of 0000. That means just do this interface and put that into network 2. And we're going to do the same for the uh, connected interface to route 3. Let's put those into area 2. All right, so hopefully we should see OSPF come up because I've configured R3. Fingers crossed. There we go. All right. So let me have a look at the uh, OSPF, uh, the round table. Sorry. Okay. So there's nothing there, right? And the reason the reason nothing is there is because our, uh, area two is discontinuous. It's not connected to area zero. All right. There's an area one right in the middle of it, and that's really that's really wrong, right? So we need to stretch now. We need to stretch area zero into area two somehow. So this is where the virtual link thing comes in. So we're going to basically create a virtual link between R2 and R3 and R an area 1 then will become a transit area um, it's going to it's going to basically take area 0 and tunnel it but it's not tunneling it's going to tunnel it through 
I'm going to say tunnel it under my breath, tunnel it, in the, between R2 and R3 so that you get area 0 going through this virtual link and then out into area 2. All right, so that, so that area 4's roots then can be learned by area 0 and so on. All right, so just, to pre so just to, let me just uh, make sure that that show IP OSPF uh, neighbor so you can see the neighborship is up, so R3's neighborship is good. And if I go into R3, you'll see some very strange things going on here. Show IP uh, OSPF route. Nope, show IP OSPF. Nope, show IP. Cra crazy fool. Um, you can see the loopback interface for R4 is, is, is understood by R3. So some things are some, some things are working. So R3 can see R4's loopback, but R4 can't see anything from R3 because R3's loopback's in uh, area 1 and R4's broken. Okay, because it's broken. So let's do this virtual link thing. Alright, let's go on to R2 and configure this side first. So here's how we do the virtual link. You go into the root OSPF process, OSPF1, and um, we put in the area command followed by the transit area. All right, so we're going to go through area one. We're going to pull the backbone area through area one. So area one is the transit area. And then we give the virtual links remote IP address. And we're going to use um, the Lubac interface of R3 for this. All right, actually, let me just check. I've got that in my round table. 3.3.3. And I do. Okay, great. So the command to create the virtual link is there. Area 1, virtual link, and then the remote IP address. So area, and then the number is the transit area. Okay. And then you need to configure the other side. So let's go into R3. And we'll go into, again, we'll go into the real process. And we'll say area 1, 41 is the transit uh, area. And then we'll do virtual link, and then again, the remote IP address of the other side, right? So we're going to R2's loopback interface. Let me just make sure I had that uh, in my room table. Yes, I do. Okay, great. So we should see the OSPF uh, virtual link adjacency come up, which we do. You can see this. I've done a few times. I've done this a few times, right? <laughs> so when you when you first create the first virtual link, it'll be VL1. Uh, when you try this again, VL2, VL3, VL4. <laughs> so I've done this. I've done this five times now. All right. Um, right, so uh, we've got OSPF virtual link up, and it's loaded from full, uh, gone from loading to full. So we know that the adjacency is now up. Um, let's just do a show IP OSPF neighbor. Woo! Oh yeah, hang on. We can see this, and then there's the virtual link adjacency. You see this here? Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, it's good. Um. Right, so now, uh, so before R4 had no OSPF roots in it whatsoever, although it had the neighborship relationship there. So let's just have a look at uh, OSPF now, and we it's working now, so that's great. Okay, so this is, so there's the virtual link. So we create the virtual link between R2 and R3, and now the backbone area has come all the way through into area two. So all the roots uh, are, are okay by R4, and uh, all the all the roots from R4 should be okay by R1. Let's have a look. Uh, I didn't need to do that. Let me just edit this. Now. There we go. So we've got the loopback interface for R4 there. Yeah, and it's an IA route, so into area route because uh, we're in area 0 and uh, R4 is in area 2. Okay, you'd expect that. Nice. What if we want to now add another area 0 over here somewhere? Uh, bang. Let's put the, another area 0 in here. Area 0. Bosh. All right. So this is looking bad now, right? We have, uh, you know, we 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 now have two uh, backbone areas, and they are they are not connected. So this this is looking this is looking bad. Um, I don't think this is going to work, right? So um, let's put loop the back interface of R4 into uh, into area zero, and see what happens. Okay. So at the moment on R1 loop back interface win. Yeah. Uh, on R4 everything still is pretty sweet. And remember we've got the virtual link uh, using. Uh, going between R2 and R3, but uh, we're putting area 0 here. Let's, let's see what happens anyway. So, on the root process, let's do network 4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.4.
So um, what we can do now is we can stretch uh, area zero as another as a, as a virtual link across the whole topology. All right. So we'll make, we'll move area zero from here to to here. All right. So it, we'll connect area zeros together. Create one glorious area zero, right? So we've we've already pulled area zero between R two and R three, so that R three's got area zero. You know all about it, right? So uh, now we can configure another virtual link from R three to R four and drag area zero uh, all the way through area two now as well. So we dragged it from R two to R three already, and now we're going to drag it from R three to R four. You don't believe me, do you? Here we go. So we're on we're on R three, and we're already in the root row SPF process. So I'm going to say area two. Now, if we remember, we, the uh, the transit area is going to be at our area two. Yeah, we've already pulled it. We've already pulled the backbone area from, through area one into here. So now we're going to pull it from here to here. So the transit area is area two. So area two, and then the uh, virtual links endpoint, which is going to be route four's loopback interface. Okay, stay with me, guys. So now I'm on R four. Oh, I'm seeing there's loads of bad stuff now. Bad news. This is bad news. I am broken. Ah, help, help. Now we'll do uh, area uh, two because now we're going from back. We're going back from R four to R three. So the transit area again is our area two. So area two, virtual link, and then we'll put the loopback interface of R three in there. All right. So that was the command I was typed in. I'm sorry about that. Not working very well. Okay. So you can see I've got an, uh, an adjacency change. I've got a neighbor come up. I've got another virtual link here. So let me just show IP OSPF neighbor. And we see we've got two neighbor relationships now, both with R3, but this one's a virtual link. All right. So um, we've got two virtual links now, one running from R2 to R3, one running from R3 to R4. So hopefully we've dragged area zero all the way across here to here. All right. So now that the loopback interface of uh, R4 is in, is in area zero, uh, R1 should see it again. And just check this out before I do this, uh, just so it looks like I know what I'm doing, which I don't. Um, if you look at the loopback interface before, it used to be an inter area row, yeah, because it was an area two. Do you remember that? And then we moved area four's loopback interface into area zero. Uh, so now when we look and we see it, and we really hopefully see loopback interface uh, for root four in the topology, it should be an ORU because it should be in the backbone area. I mean, it's. <sighs> And so there you go. All right. And then um, on R4, let's have a look at the uh, round table on here. Yeah. Have you noticed anything strange about this one? Yeah. So before uh, the 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 OSPF round table used to look like uh, this, where we had uh, a loopback interface for R1 as an in, as an IA route, R2 IA route, R3 IA route. Yeah. And now everything's a flipping all route apart from R3. That's because we are on the backbone area, man. R4 is part of the backbone area. Okay, so um, anything that I learned from the backbone area before, I guess what? I mean, I'm in that area, so it's now an O route. Okay, so virtual links, crazy, crazy, crazy things. Um, loads of great fun to have in an exam, and um, hopefully, I've shown you some some things there we can do. Going to go a little bit further on. Going to do password authentication on the OSPF uh, in the next in the next video. Thank you for watching. Uh, and uh, if you've got any questions, throw them out to me. Love to hear from you, or, or uh, follow me on Twitter and do all that great social social networking stuff and help me out because I love uh, I love traffic and we haven't got enough. So thank you for watching, and take care.